former President Obama just speaking out now about the dangers of misinformation. President Obama warned that the speed and prevalence of misinformation has increased in recent years and that it worries him and should worry everyone. His comments echo some of what he wrote in his latest memoir, and they come as part of an appearance today at the American Library Association annual conference. The degree to which uh, misinformation is now disseminated at warp speed uh, in coordinated ways that we haven't seen before. Um, and that the guardrails I thought were in place around many of our democratic institutions uh, really depend on the two parties agreeing to those ground rules, those guardrails, and that one of them right now doesn't seem as committed to them uh, as in previous generations, that worries me. Uh, and I think we should all be worried. CNN chief media correspondent Brian Stelter is here. Um, Brian, I mean, forgive me, but I feel like we know this. <laughs> you and I deal with this every day of our lives. At January 6th, look no further to the effects and the danger of misinformation than an insurrection on January 6th. What do you make from the former president? Well, comments? for a former president to address this in such blunt terms, though, does speak to the crisis we're in, this information crisis that we are in. Uh, we have not had a situation in our lives where a former president feels compelled to speak out the way that Obama has. And he's been doing that with a book last year and now through these public events. I think it, my, my impression is he's trying to come up with the way to be as stark, as blunt as he possibly can be, you know, while preserving the kind of dignity of a former president and the, the kind of position that that would normally entail. But but time and time again, he warns the biggest crisis in this country is that we are divided along information lines, that we can't figure out a way to communicate with each other. And, and in this new comment today, he's citing the riot as the evidence of that, the riot of lies of January 6th. And if you listen between the lines there, he's really saying the Republican Party has come unglued. At, but of course, what he's not presenting and what really no one's presenting are solutions. You can identify the problem. You can identify what's gone wrong, but it's so much harder to get to that place of solutions. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we don't see that in this presentation. I mean, it's also his classic Barack Obama understatement of, you know, and I would say one party is not as tethered to reality. I mean, hair on, this is a hair on fire moment, as I think that you often bring up. I think I try to. That we know this. Mm. We know this. We're in different echo chambers, and it's getting really dangerous. And I agree with you. I don't know what the solution is, but I know that everyone has become more entrenched and it's gotten deadly. One of the words he's used recently is nationalization. I think that's a helpful way to think about it. As local news is hollowed out, as local politics gets more and more polarized, everything's being nationalized. And he's identified that as part of the problem. That gets to media business structures. That gets to the way that our, our media is funded and how it's profitable to be polarized and, and fighting all the time. So again, he's pointing to those issues. I think he's doing it really well. But the solutions are structural. They are financial as well as psychological. I mean, I was just pointing out, we were just listening to President Biden's jobs plan. They weren't playing it on Fox. The very crowd, the MAGA crowd that wants to hear about no more outsourcing. Mm. You know, you don't need a college degree to have a well-paying job, and they're not getting that information. And as a result, poll show Republicans are so much more pessimistic about the economy, they may not actually be hearing the same information. It's so frustrating. Brian, thank you Thanks. very much. Great to talk to you.